Hi everyone, and today we're going to be looking at a problem that comes up when we're using the array modifier with the curve deform modifier, and we're using something called the fit type of fit curve. So I have a Bezier circle in here, and I've arrayed this cube all the way along this Bezier circle. The problem is that sometimes we'll see this type of effect when we apply the modifier to the full length of the curve. This is quite easy to solve, and we're going to show you how to do that in this video. So I start a new project in Blender. First thing I'm going to do is delete this cube. So right click on it, after selecting it and hit delete. I'm not going to be using shortcuts, it's all going to be using the icons and tools on the screen, so we can see what we're doing. So first we're going to add some kind of path. I'm going to use a curve from the add menu and a circle. Now I'm going to scale this circle and we're going to scale out this way and that scale out this way as well. And also that's come in to the object mode and edit and let's move some of these. So we're going to use the move tool and let's move this point, move it this way. So we've got a bit of a different shape and move this one, say this way, something like that and come out here. So we've got this shape here. Let's come back to object mode. Now what I'm going to do is add something to array along this. So let's click off, come up to add mesh, and let's go for a cube. So we've got a cube and we're going to scale this. So I want to place this cube and create a number of copies along here that follows this path. To do that, we're gonna use the ray modifier. So come over to the spanner icon, add modifier, and use the array. But first of all, make sure the cube is selected. Add modifier, array. So we've arrayed the cube and we can see that if we increase these and increase the factor, which is the spacing in between. So we go for a factor of two. That means that we can get a cube in between here. But we don't want to use this count. All we want to do is drop this down and use the fit curve. This means that we can select the curve either with the eyedropper or drop this down and select Bezier circle. So this is the amount or supposedly the amount that's going to go around this circle. To get it to go around this circle, well, it's not a circle, it's a deformed oval Bezier circle. Let's come in and add another modifier. So let's collapse the array modifier for the cube and come into add modifier and select deform modifier of curve. It's going to ask for a curve. Now this is where the confusion happens. We select the curve, you can see it's not placed it all the way around this curve. The reason being is the scaling hasn't been applied. So if I come up to the object and come down to the apply and hit scale, it's applied that scaling around this curve. We might even have to do it with the Bezier circle itself. Click it, object, apply, and scale. So you can see that's been applied now, and we've got an even distribution of this object across here. Let's come down and do some modifications. So I'm gonna modify the scale. So we've got the cube selected, We've got the scale tool. We're going to bring this down. And now I'm going to look from the top and bring this in. So we're bringing it in this way. Well, that's the wrong way. So as you can see, as we bring it in, the scale changes again. Let's bring this back. If that happens, then we still got to come up to the object, apply, scale. And that fills in those gaps. So let's bring this down this way. And once we get to the point of we're happy, we finally come up to object, apply, and the scale, and we're all set to go. So if we change the scale of this, this way, we're fine, but if we start changing the scale this way, then we need to do the object, apply, scale, 
if we come into the Bezier curve and we come into say edit mode and we move this out, you see the scaling is being applied straight away. So we're all good there. But it's worth checking to make sure that this is working as well. If it doesn't, then we just apply the scaling there. Now, the reason why this is happening, if I just delete that array, let's come up to the cube, let's come out of edit mode, so this one here, object mode. And let's look at the cube, let's right click and delete that cube. So now we've got no modifiers. If I add the cube again, add mesh cube and bring out the flyout bar, look at the scaling. If we scale this down, you can see the scaling has changed. Now, when we come in and add the modifiers of the cube, the array modifier and fit type, fit curve and select the curve, the Bezier curve, and then add the second modifier, which is the default modifier of the curve. Bear with me. So we collapse that, select the curve object and so that this one, we use the eyedropper this time. Notice that the scaling is 0.616. So when we scale that, this isn't set to one. And if we use say 0.5 on this, you will see that this is half the Bezier. 0.5 all the way along, you can see that's half the Bezier. The minute we come up to selecting the cube and come up to the object, apply and scale, you notice the scale is now set to one. Increasing the scale this way changes the scale. As you can see here, all we need to do is come up object, apply and scale. And that set the scaling back. Let's scale down this way, scale down this way, which is good. Object, apply, scale. As you can see, that sets that back to one. And if we change anything like this one, it's decreased the scaling of the original object along this axis here. And you can see that in here, see that shrinking down. So it needs to be applied again for the amount of copies. So that's come over to the array and add some factor in here. Let's increase this factor. And we increase this out. You can see what's happening here. It's getting wider. The factor is there. So let's decrease the factor down to 1.5. But we've got this gap here. Object apply and scale. So there you go. That's how to deal with the gaps in your array when you're using the fit curve and the curve modifier. I hope that's coming useful and I hope to see you again soon. If you're enjoying these videos and you would like to support the channel, then you can do so via my Ko-Fi page. That's at ko-fi.com forward slash MJ3D studio. Any donations will be used to help to span the channel. I'd like to thank you all for watching. And I hope to see you again soon.